Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this last lesson in mathematics or physical science for the year. This is it. This is the last lesson for the year. Um, apparently, some of you are still writing some science, so we are doing this last lesson just for you. So let's get to it. What we are doing is we're going through some old exam paper questions. Now, unfortunately, we did go through some of this in the last lesson, but unfortunately, the scrap session ended prematurely for technical reasons. So I'm going to start this question again because I'm not sure how far I got. It says a steel ball of mass five kilograms, so it has mass of five kilograms, is rolling over a frictionless surface, okay? As shown below, so there's no friction, nothing we have to worry about. It says when the ball reaches point A, it has mechanical energy of 250 joules. So here yeah, it has got 250 joules as it comes down the hill. It's got a mechanical energy of 250 joules. The sketch is not drawn to scale. Okay, it says first of all, it says state the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. Okay, so what you need to know is a mechanical energy is conserved in an isolated system. In other words, okay, so that's the definition definition of conservation of mechanical energy is that mechanical energy is isolated in a um, sorry, and mechanical energy is conserved in an isolated system. Now it says use your knowledge of the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to write down the kinetic energy of the steel ball at point B. At point B, do you agree it has no height? So therefore, it has got no potential energy. Therefore, all of this kinetic energy here, or all of this mechanical energy, which is 250 joules, is going to be converted into the kinetic energy at B. So at B, the kinetic energy, kinetic energy at B, equals, sorry, this is 5.2.1, 5.2.1, the kinetic energy B is 250 joules. And how do we know this? Because it's a frictionless surface, which means all the energy, all the energy has to be moved from one point to the next. Okay, it's transferred from one form to another, and it is not lost, or shall I say, transferred into friction or anything else. So we've done that. Now it says calculate the speed of the steel ball at the instant it reaches point C. Now it says calculate. Now A, we don't know. I know A looks like it's the same height as C, but we don't know what height A is, okay? So do you agree that all the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, all at B, have to equal the kinetic energy plus the potential energy at C, okay? Now, admittedly, there's no potential energy. Um, admittedly, there's no potential energy at this point here. So therefore, this is zero. Um, and we know that the kinetic energy is 250. Now, we need to work out what the speed of the steel ball is, okay? Now we know it's gained potential energy of um, MGH, which is going to be of MGH, plus a half MV squared, okay? So this is 250. The mass of this object, they've told us, is five. Acceleration due to gravity is 9,8. The height it's reached is five meters, plus a half, again, times five, times by the velocity squared. So now we're gonna work out what the speed of the ball was when it reaches C. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take everything across and end up solving for V squared. So we've got 250 minus, if we put this together, we've got 25 times 9.8. 25 times 9.8, which is 245, okay, is equal to a half, which is 2,5 V squared. So do you get that we got five divided by 2,5 is equal to V squared. So V is gonna be the square root of five divided by 2.5. So I'm going to just pop this in my calculator. I'm gonna go square root of five divided by Mm, let's try again, square root of bracket, five divided by 2.5, close bracket equals 3.54. 
So the velocity equals 3,54 meters per second. And we don't have to say the direction because I've actually asked you for the speed. Now it says determine whether mechanical energy is conserved. And if mechanical energy acquired by the ball at point A will be enough to carry the ball over point D. Okay, show all calculations. Okay, so we know that the kinetic energy over here or the total mechanical energy is 250 joules, right? We need to know how much energy is going to be used just to get to that height. So EP um, at, what height was this? Was it at D? Is going to be MGH, okay? Which is the mass, which is five times by the gravity, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, times by the height, which in this case is seven. So if we put that in our calculator, we've got 35 times 9.8 is 343. So it says determine whether the mechanical energy acquired by the ball at point A is enough to cover, carry the ball over point D. Guys, it's not even going to get to point D. This is the potential energy required to get to point B. It's 35 times 9.8. At A, we only have 250 joules. This is what is needed to get to point B. Um, D. So in this point is yeah D. So therefore, it's not even going to reach that velocity at that height. Never mind, have enough velocity for, I mean, have enough energy for kinetic energy and speed. Right now it says next question. It says an object of mass 0.2 kgs. Let's fill it in. 0.2 kgs is released at point A moves down a frictionless section uh, AC along a curved track. Along CD, it experiences friction. So yeah, it's getting friction. Okay. At point D and stops at point B. So yeah, the final velocity is zero, right? The vertical height of the point of A above X is 0,8 meters as shown below. First, it says, write down in words the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. So obviously, the principle of conservation of mechanical energy is that energy is conserved, or the, the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy um, is always conserved in an isolated system. Okay, now it says, calculate the gravitational potential energy of the object at point A just before it was released. Okay, so UP or just U, shall I say U, which is the same as EP, is going to be MGH. We've got the mass of the object, it is 0, 0,2. We've got the acceleration due to gravity is 9,8. And we've got the height, which is 0, 0,8, 0, 0,8. So using that, do you agree that we can work out the energy this object has at point B? I mean, so far, um, at point A. So that's what we're doing here. We're finding the gravitational potential energy at point A. So therefore, we can say 0 0.2 times 9.8 times 0 0.8 is equal to 15.68, is equal to 15,68 joules. So that's how much energy he has to get that he has when he gets here is 15,68 joules. Right. Now it says at point B, the speed of the object is 3 meters per second. Use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the vertical height at point B above the ground. Okay, now guys, a couple of things. The first thing is, if they say use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy, you can't go use equations of motion. So if they say use energy principles and you use equations of motion, you're going to get zero marks. You have to use the correct thing that they've asked you for, okay? So that's very important. Okay, the next thing is, it says at point B, the object, the speed of the object is three meters per second. So do you agree it has gained kinetic, any kinetic energy to get from A to B? It has sped up. It has gained kinetic energy 
to get from A to B, right? Then it says use the principle of going to, to calculate the maximum height. We want to know how tall that is, right? So we know that U plus K at the top equals U plus K at the middle. Okay. Now it says use, it tells us that the total energy we have at the top is 15,68 joules. We worked it out. The potential energy is made of the mass of the object, which is 0, 0,2 times by the gravitational acceleration, which is 9,8, times by the height above the ground, which is 0,8, right. So that's a 0,8, that's a 9,8. So if we multiply it, we get 0.2 times 9,8 times 0 0.8, and it equals 1.57. So the amount of energy we have sorry, let me just think so which this bit here is equal to one comma no, I don't know if I've done this right. Okay, so let me just show you again because I think I miswrote this just a second, so let's not erase all the ink. Oh, and now I've just done okay do you understand that what we're saying is the sum of all the energy in the um, question at the time has to be equal for the thing to be working so there's at this point here there's no potential energy and there's only kinetic energy so like I said it's mgh but at point B there is mgh B plus a half mv squared b right okay now the mgh of this is going to be the mass of the object which is 0, 0,2 the acceleration due to gravity which is 9,8 and the height which we were given that would fall from is 0,8 because remember we, because we're working with energy and gravitational potential energy it's got to go straight down it's got to go straight down you can't go around the path okay so that's why we'd be using 0 0.8 okay equals right the mgh at b is going to be the mass which is Um, yeah, the mass, which we know is 0, 0,2, the gravity, which is 9,8 times by the height, plus a half, the mass of the object, which is 0, 0,2, and the velocity of the object at B. Do we have it? So this point B, the speed is going at 3, at 3 meters per second, so it's 9, because it's squared. So let's put this in our calculators. Yeah, there's 0 0.2, 9.8, and 0 0.8. So we get 0 0.2 times 9.8 times 0 0.8 is equal to 1, 568. I'm leaving it with those digits, 1, 568 equals... 1.2 times 9.8 equals 1 comma 96 1 comma 96 H plus 0.5 times now what is this the mass of the object which is 0.2 times by the velocity of the object which was what did they test it's 3 so that's just times by 9. Okay, so that becomes 0 0.9. I can get there. 0, 9. Right, so now we can subtract. We've got 1, 568 minus 0, 9 divided by 1, 96 is going to give me the height. So we're going to go 1, 568 minus 0, 9 divided by 1.96 equals 0, 0,34. So the total height of this thing is, at this point here at B, 
is node comma three four. Right. Now it says object at point C reaches point C. So it reaches point C at a velocity of three comma nine six meters per second. So it's obviously sped up as it's been going down, which is good. Now it says write down the energy conversion which takes place as the object moves from C to D. So the energy transfer is going to be kinetic energy to um, friction energy or sound energy, right? Then it says calculate the acceleration of object experience as it moves from point C to D. So this is a straight line. So we can stop thinking about using energy and we can start thinking about using equations of motion. So what do we have? We've got that the initial velocity at C, we don't know. The final velocity, we do know it is zero. They want the acceleration. That's what they want. They want the acceleration. We've got the delta x. Okay, we've got the delta x. Um, delta x equals 2. Uh, do we have a? No. And do we have 2a delta? And the delta t we don't have either. Okay. Oh no, hang on. It says I've just reached point C 3.96. Sorry. So we do have the 3 comma 96. Right. So now what do they want? They want to know what is the acceleration A. Okay. So let us erase. Oh, sorry. Let us erase. All this. Okay, let's go. So now, if we've done that, we can now do this last part of the question, which says calculate the acceleration of the object experiences as it moves from point C to point D. Okay, so we've got therefore that we've worked out the initial velocity, the final velocity, the delta x and acceleration, but we can measure the acceleration. Okay, it says use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the vertical height of point A above the ground. And remember that it tells us that our object reaches a point C at velocity of 3.96. And then they ask us to write down the equation of the, of the thing for the energy conversion okay energy conversion like i said was from kinetic energy to friction finally it's just calculus acceleration okay so do you agree that we know that f delta x is equal to what f delta x is equal to delta k f delta x is equal to delta k it says calculate acceleration of the object as a with calculate the object experience as it moves from point C to point D acceleration. Um, okay, so in order to get acceleration, you need to get a formula for force. Um, we've got the displacement is two. We've got the energy it is going to be a half m final velocity of three comma nine six. Um, half mb squared um, minus what is this? Um, 3.96 minus the initial velocity, which is zero, all over two, and then the thing here is going to be um, x. So therefore, it is 2x is going to be 2 times 2. Um, let me just see if I'm right here. Let me think about this. Um, let's rather do it like this. So f delta f is m delta x, which is a delta, a half, 
mv squared, right. So do you agree the masses can cancel? Um, and now we've got delta x and we've got v. T. I oh, know. Shame. Okay. I think let's not erase the M. Let's take it nice and slowly so as not to confuse us. Okay, so we're not going to erase the M, so we're going to take it nice and slowly so as not to confuse us. Right, so let's go left hand side. So the left hand side is going to just be the force multiplied by delta X. It's MA delta X, or in this case, they've given us the forces. It says that. Um, what does it say? It says that we've got F is equal to mass times acceleration times the change in displacement. The change in displacement happens to be 2 in this case, and the mass happens to be 0 0.2. So we've got 0, 2 times by the displacement of 2 times by the acceleration is equal to a half times by the change in mass, which hasn't changed, hasn't chopped off a limb, but the change in velocity has increased and we worked that out to be, what did we work it out to be? Oh, they gave us, no? Three comma nine six squared. Right, so therefore this cancels and A is going to be 3,96 divided by 2 times 0 0.2, which is 0 0.4. Um, please note that this was squared. Okay, the 2's cancel, the 1's became. Right, so therefore we can pop that in our calculator and we can say, 3.96 squared divided by 0 0.4, which gives us an acceleration of 39,20 meters per second squared. There you go. Right, now it says, a hybrid for car is now tested for its performance while going uphill. Okay, so it's going uphill. The car reaches the foot at the incline with a speed of 10 meters per second. So it's going 10 meters per second at the bottom of the hill. And then it reaches the top 3.5 meters higher. So it's gained potential energy and it's gained kinetic energy. And five seconds later, and we've got the time, and you'll see that it's now going at a speed of 20 meters per second. So it's not only got gained potential energy, but it's gained velocity as well. The mass of the car is 1,500 kilograms. First of all, it says calculate the mechanical energy of the hybrid at A. Okay, so the hybrid degrees on the ground. So since it's on the ground, it has no potential energy. It's only got kinetic energy. It's only got kinetic energy. So in that case, it's going to have at A, the energy is going to be a half mv squared which is a half times by the mass of the car which is 1500 times by its velocity which is 10 squared so it's going to be 50 times by 1500 so that's one two three that's three nodes and five times 15 is 60 and that would be joules okay so the mechanical energy of the hybrid is a now, it now has mechanical energy at B. Now, because of the fact that it has a car and therefore has an engine, which means it can push itself up the hill, it can either gain, gain um, potential energy or it can um, lose, sorry, because it can push itself up the hill, it can either gain mechanical energy or it can lose mechanical energy, depending on whether the engine is big enough and strong enough to push it up the hill. So what we need to do is work out what the potential energy is and the kinetic energy at the top and add them. So the total mechanical energy at B, the mechanical energy at B is equal to K 
of b plus u of b. The kinetic energy of the b plus the mechanical energy of b. So the kinetic energy of b is equal to the mass of the car, which is 1500, times by the gravity, which is now 8, times by the height, which is 3,5, plus mg, um, h is going to be the mass of the car, which is 1500, 9,8, oh, that was mgh, um, sorry, what am I doing? Sorry, that's potential energy, I want kinetic energy. Um, it's still mass, but then it's going to be a half mv squared, so we're going to times this by a half. And then it says, where was it? It says, oh, Candace. Sorry, for some reason I can't write today, I don't know why. Plus a half times by the mass, which was 1500, times velocity squared. Okay, and they tell us that the velocity is 20 meters. 20 squared. Okay, so now we need to pop that in our calculator. Oh dear, I forgot we don't have a calculator up today. Stupid thing stopped working just before I came on air. Okay, so let's do it with a normal calculator. It's 1500 times 9.8 times 3.5. That is 51,450 plus 20 squared times 0 0.5 times 1500 is equal to 300123, which equals 51,450 51, equals 351,450 joules. So that day is the mechanical energy of the hybrid of the now it says what was the increase in the mechanical energy? Well, you can see it's from 60,000 to this, so obviously that there is the increase. Right, next. Okay, so now it says a new question. The two kilogram metal ball is suspended from a rope as a pendulum. Okay, so it's two kilogram metal ball. It is really, so it's two kilograms. Let's just write two kilograms here, so I remember. It is released from point A and swings down to point B. Show that the velocity of the ball is independent of its mass. Okay, so do you agree that we can work out the velocity at B? We've got equations of motion, for example. Um, but the initial velocity at A is released, so the initial velocity is zero. We've got a final velocity, which we don't know. Um, we have a displacement, delta x, which I'm going to take as 0 0.5. And but T is equal to, uh, does it tell us? As it released from this point to K, okay, we don't have T. Um, MGH. The mass is two kilograms and the height of this is 0 0,5 meters. So do you agree that MGH, because when it's just up here, it's been released from the point A. If it's released, it means it has no kinetic energy. So the MGH is going to be the mass of the object, which is 2,000 times by the gravity due to acceleration, acceleration due to gravity, which is 9,8, times by the height, which is 0, 0,5. So let's pop that into our calculator, shall we? So we've got 2, 1, 2, 3, times 9.8, times 0, 0,5, okay, so that's 9,800. That's 9,800 joules, by the way. Now it says, Still trying to show that the velocity of the ball is independent of its mass. So now that is its potential energy, right? Its potential energy is mgh, 2000 times 9.8 times 0.5, okay? 
now what we need to do is work out its kinetic energy here. So we know the kinetic energy. Let's work out the velocity. Um, I don't know. There's an easier way to do this. I don't know why I'm doing this. Look here. There's a way easier way. Wait, I'll show you. Do you agree that at the point A, your EK plus EP has to be equal to EP plus EK at the bottom? Okay. This here is mgh of a plus a half mva squared is equal to mghb plus a half mv squared. So do you see that I could take out a common factor of m and m and m and m. Therefore, I can say that gh, let's try again, ghA plus a half VA squared is equal to GHB plus a half um, V squared. And you'll notice that this equation is independent of its mass. So therefore, it is true. Finally, it says calculate the velocity of the ball at point B. If that's the case, then we know that EK at A has to equal EP at B, okay? So the EK is A is a half MV squared is equal to the EP at B, which would be, no, sorry. The EK at B is equal to the EP plus the EK at A, right? Is equal to potential energy, or we could say it equals total mechanical energy, but it equals the total I mean EP, which is going to be M of the object, which is 2 kilograms. The acceleration due to gravity is 9,8. The height is 0,5 because that's how far it swings, plus a half, no, no, not a half, yes, half. Mass is A, and velocity is what we're trying to find out. Um, no, the velocity at this point is zero, so that goes away. So now we know that two times 9.8 times 0.5 2.98 times 0.5 times 2 is 298. So that's 298 is equal to a half 0.5 times times the mass of the object, which is 2 times the velocity with the object at this point here, which we're trying to find out. No, we're trying to find out B, which is zero. I'm so confused. Okay, so we've got a half times the mass, which is two V squared. Okay, so obviously then these cancel this way and V squared is equal to 298. Sorry, I was confused about why I was confused. Therefore, V is equal to second function. Okay, shift of 298, which equals back up. Seventeen comma two, seventeen comma two six meters per second. There you go. So that is the velocity of the ball at point B. Right, grade tens. So instead of going on to the next question, I want to give you some advice, and then we're going to call it a day. I would really like to suggest that you always practice. Obviously, learn your theory and then practice, practice, practice. Try not to use the OER method. Try to, in other words, go and. Um, Try and help yourself to 
look at the question only after you've done the whole question, okay? Look at the answer after you've done the whole question. And other than that, just practice, 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 take deep breaths, and good luck. Cheers.